This is the second video in a series of videos for the new app Stellar by Airy. We're picking up where we left off in the last video in Scene Setup. We're going to tap the center button at the bottom of the screen, Color Control, to move to the Color Control window. In this screen, we have several different sections that allow us to control the fixtures in different ways. On the left-hand side of the screen, we have our fixture list. Here we could pick fixtures to control from the list. On the right hand side of the screen is the main window for controlling the fixture's color output and intensity level. The top of the screen has several different buttons for controlling master intensity and blackout, looks, and favorites. At the top of the screen in the center is a blue button that allows you to select different color modes. Let's jump down and select the sky panel S60C that's attached to this scene. This sky panel happens to be in the CCT color mode. The CCT color mode allows for changing of color temperature and green magenta point. We could turn the fixture intensity on by sliding the fixture intensity slider upwards. We could change the color temperature by running our finger over the color temperature arc or by quickly jumping to a color temperature by pressing one of the quick buttons, like 5600K or 3200K. We could change the green magenta point by sliding our finger left or right on the green magenta bar or tapping the neutral button to snap it back to neutral. I could also enter a color temperature manually by clicking the CCT button on the right side of the screen. Here I could delete the current color temperature and enter in any color temperature I wish within the acceptable range. I could also do this for green magenta. Below the fixture intensity slider is an icon to black out the fixture. I could press this button and turn the fixture output off without having to adjust my fixture intensity. A blackout active indicator appears in the top of the screen to indicate that the fixture is no longer outputting any light. On the top right side of the screen is a color swatch. The color swatch represents the color that the fixture is outputting. To the right of the color swatch is the ECC icon. That stands for Extended Color Control. If we tap on it, it will bring us to the Extended Color Control page where I could fine tune the output color in any direction that I want. For example, I could add a little red or take out a little bit of blue. If I press the X button in the top right hand corner, it'll show that ECC is active, so that way I always know there's an overlay color over my main color. To deactivate it, click the ECC button and tap the reset all. Click the X button to go back out to the main screen. Let's take a look at a different color mode. I'll press the blue color mode button at the top of the page and select RGBW mode. This changes the color screen completely. I now have a new user interface custom designed for this particular color mode. I could turn on the fixture intensity and drag my finger around the color field in order to adjust the color. Dragging my finger here will automatically adjust the red, green, blue, and white intensities of this particular sky panel. The red, green, blue, and white intensity values are shown on the right hand side of the screen. I could tap any one of these boxes and enter in an exact number just by typing it in and pressing the OK button. Underneath the values you could see a calibrated mode toggle switch. This will turn RGBW calibrated mode on or off. If the mode is on, I could tap the white point button and this will bring up a color temperature slider and a green magenta point slider. This will allow me to adjust the white point of the RGBW mode. In RGBW mode, there are two ways to select color. We have the color field and we have sliders. Tap the sliders button at the bottom of the page to change the way that you could select the color for RGBW. You now have four sliders that allow you to adjust the individual intensities of the red, green, blue, and white LEDs. Let's switch color modes again by pressing the blue button at the top of the screen. I'm going to select HSI mode now and this brings again a new user interface. I could increase the intensity of the fixture and slide my finger around the color wheel to adjust the hue and the saturation of the fixture at the same time. On the right hand side of the screen you'll see the two different values for hue and saturation. I could tap on one of these values and enter in a precise value with the number pad. Let's change the color mode now to gel mode. In gel mode, I have a list of all 318 digital gels that are pre-programmed into every sky panel. I could sort this list by pressing the four horizontal line icon at the top of the screen. This will bring up a sort menu where I could pick from brand, chromaticity, category, number, and name. Let's choose number for now, and this will sort all of the gels by number. You could tell whether they're Roscoe or Lee gels by the letter in front of the number. If I only wanted to see Roscoe gels, I could uncheck the Lee filter category and this will show only Roscoe gels in their number order. I could simply tap on a gel to select it. To change the base color temperature of the gel, 
You could tap on the multi-segmented button on the right hand side of the screen that allows me to choose from 3200 and 5600. I could also see what the light will look like with the color or without the color by pressing the toggle switch on the right hand side of the screen. If I scroll the list upwards and I forget which color I have selected, I could press the icon that looks like an arrow with a dot next to it to jump right to that color. I could press the magnifying glass to search for a particular gel. For example, if I type in blue and search for blue colors, it'll find all the gels with the word blue in it. Not only the name of the gel, but also metadata that's attached to that gel. A unique feature to the Stellar app is the ability to select gels in the L series. If I tap on the L10, I could go into the color mode selector and choose the gel mode. This will give access to all of the gels available on the sky panel, now available on the L series, and the colors will match exactly. Let's change the color mode to XY coordinates. This brings up the CIE 1931 chromaticity diagram user interface. I could increase the fixture intensity and simply drag my finger around this color space in order to pick an X and Y value. If I knew the exact X and Y value that I wanted to enter, I could simply tap on the X and Y value buttons on the right hand side of the screen and enter in a particular number. To select a color temperature in this mode, I could tap on the checkbox for CCT and this will allow me to move my finger along the CCT arc and select a particular color temperature. I could tap on the CCT button on the right hand side of the screen and enter in a color temperature anywhere from 1667 to 25,000. I could also limit the color gamut that I'm choosing from by tapping on either the Rec 709 or the Rec 2020 checkbox. This will limit the color gamut and not allow me to select a color outside of this color gamut. The same goes for Rec 2020. Let's change the color mode to source matching. Source matching is a list of real world light sources found in the world around us. We could scroll through this list and pick any of the light sources that we want, such as the green traffic light, a ceramic, or amber caution. I could also sort this list by pressing the four horizontal button in the top right hand corner and sort these by category or by name. Let's look at it by category. We have our incandescent, fluorescent, discharge, and other sources. We could also search for a particular source by tapping the magnifying glass and typing in a phrase such as warm. This will find all the different types of warm light sources. Let's change the color mode one last time to lighting effects. All of the available lighting effects are shown on the top of the screen and you could scroll through them horizontally. If I tap on the process effect, different types of parameters appear below it. I can increase the fixture intensity and also increase parameters like speed, change the color temperature, or even crossfade into a saturated color. On the right hand side of the screen are additional parameters. For this particular effect we have left to right motion or right to left motion. Let's take a look at another effect such as fireworks. The fireworks effect has fewer parameters, allowing me to control the speed of the fireworks effect and the color combinations, such as colors only, white light, or colors in white light. That concludes the topics for this video. Please join us for the next video where we will be talking about creating looks and saving favorites in Stellar. Thanks for joining us.